What's up YouTube? It's Gordon with another Logic Pro X tutorial series video on Season 3. Still talking about alchemy, still talking about source element controls. Today's turn is going to be the last tab of the source element controls, which is the virtual analog controls or parameters. And this is going to be also a kind of type of a shorter video than my typical uh, source and alchemy videos that I've been doing so far. So after that, we only have one tab left of about source sources themselves, which is the morph. That's going to take a few videos also to get through. And after that, we will finally go into the modulation section, which has a couple of parts in there that we're going to break down the same as we have done with the source and wind control. A quick note that I wanted to make, you probably have noticed that I didn't put anything last week. I was took a short break and took a short vacation uh, from everything, basically. So, but now we're back and videos are going to be flowing a little bit more regular, as I have said before. So without further ado, let's just go into Logic Pro. And I have a the typical preset change for our videos. I'm going with vintage flyer pads. Let's just take a quick listen to that. different sound. Another quick note that I wanted to make, I have been saying like, oh, look at this orange here. That's um, some some morphing, some automation. Actually, I want to correct myself on that. That's actually modulation. The morphing, if I'm not mistaken, is going to be represented in green. So orange will be modulation, something that's being routed to the modulation control and green should be automation. So Sorry if, if I get you confused afterwards. I haven't really delved too much into it, so I it shouldn't be confusing, but I wanted to make the note now because we're gonna be jumping to modulation later on, very soon after we talk about morphing. Anyways, from this preset, it's a good thing that I already have a virtual analog parameter tab on and has some parameters there. So this preset contains that source element control for source A, and since we're going to talk about this controls, that's good because I don't have to do any changes. Always keep in mind that you can always go to file and clear. And just to give you another quick hint and note, when you do a clear and go back to default settings, VA, as we're going to call it from now on, will always be available. And that's because that's your your waveform and your oscillator window and, and, and controls. So if you don't have any sample loaded, you will typically try to load a sine wave or any any type of waveform into your source, and from there uh, you can modulate it and edit it to your heart's content just using this parameter without having a sample. But getting that out of the way, let's start talking about all these parameters. You know that to be able to have this uh, available and visible, you have to be in advanced view, just making sure. You can have VA on for any number of sources and you can combine them with all the other previews source element controls that we have discussed like for example this one has additive and a form and active but we're going to be talking about ba so going from left to right as usual we have uh, the oscillator and noise section so for the oscillator the first thing we have here is the on and off button then the as we have seen in every other parameter that has an on off button, this just enables it or disables it. Pretty self-explanatory. To the right of that, you have a an oscillator or a wave pop-up menu. What that's going to do is just give you this massive list of waveforms that you can choose from and that you can also cycle through by using the previews and next arrow button from there we move into 
the knobs that we have for the oscillator uh, parameters and then you have first a oscillator or volume knob as it's known here and that's going to set the output level of the oscillator as with all other source element controls parameters that have a volume knob this is going to set it relative to anything else that you have active so here for BA in this example we have minus 3.18 decibels so it's relative to anything that you have also here in combination in this example would be in relation to additive and format but let's keep going to the right of that we have a sim or symmetry knob that's going to alter the symmetry or obviously the shape of your waveform you have you haven't noticed you this is your waveform window which is always active or it's always on right but depending on which source element control you select is what you're going to be able to see when you're in the virtual analog you see the actual shape of the combination of the oscillator wave and the noise so the symmetry knob is going to alter the symmetry of that waveform one thing to note here is that when you have a square wave your symmetry knob is going to act as a pulse width control the range of this goes from 5 to 95 as opposed to 0 to 100 because 0 and 100 would be extremes and they could create artifacts so this is something that's in the manual i haven't really tried it but i believe it if it's any and it's true for pretty much everything in logic when you have um, a knob or a slider that doesn't have extreme values it's typically because it, the, the program is trying to prevent you from going to those because it's going to create either an overload in the cpu or it's going to create artifacts or it's going to create well so anyway so moving on your face knob is just going to set the the start point of your oscillator which is in turn the face and this goes from zero to nine point 99.9 percent .9%. a value of a hundred which is what we have in this case the maximum is just going to create a random variation of the waveform start point each time the oscillator or that waveform is triggered each time, each time you press a, a note it's going to create some randomization of that phase of that starting point then to the right you have a sync we have seen this before this is just going to synchronize your oscillator to a particular pitch so it's in it's given seven tones to the right we have these two guys that work together and you have your number or your unison voices number or amount and this is going to be setting the amount of voices that you have it goes from 1 to 16 voices this is not new right we have seen this before then the detune knob is going to set the amount of detuning or and the stereo width that you're going to be introducing as a variation of your voices so these two work together this is something that we have seen before it's available in some of the other synths that logic has maybe not to this level of depth right that's to each source but it's still something that we have covered before and that you are going to see in different synths that Logic had and has carried those, those legacy synths, right? Now, let's move to the noise section. Nothing new here as, as, as in analogy, right? An analogy to the oscillator. We still have a non and off button and we have a waveform or a noise pop-up menu that's going to give you a selection of waveforms or noise waveforms that's why it's a little bit limited you can also go previews and next with your selections and then down here we have another volume knob that's exactly as the other volume knobs it's gonna set the output level relative to everything else and then last but not least you have a low and high kind nothing new your low cut is going to set that cut of frequency where your low frequencies are not going to be allowed to pass and then the high cut will do the same thing but for the higher frequencies and that's pretty much it with uh, with this video so now i want to take the opportunity just to do a little recap of sorts so we have seen 
all of this source element control so i will see additive spectral pitch format granular sampler and today the va obviously keep in mind that some of these can be or are activated depending on the source that you have or the sample how you imported the sample here right from the import window import audio browser so if this is the first video that you're seeing and you're wondering why these other ones are grayed out is because this we don't even have a sample loaded here we just have an additive waveform and then next video we're going to talk about morphing a little bit of morphing this takes care or this is tied to your global sources so that's why you see uh, your global sources here and then with morph you just change to your morph window we have seen this before as well so you, you're going to see that it works kind of similar to how we've seen before it's just that it's going to be introduced into different sources at the same time so now i'm going to be cutting the video here and as usual thanks to everybody that has commented liked subscribed shared on social media send me questions send me uh, comments or whatever dislikes even so i, I want to just as usual thank the support if you like this video please like it if you didn't you can't dislike it if you have a question leave a comment or contact me on any of my other social media contacts which are at the bottom of the video make sure to help me spread the word by subscribing and share it with other people on social media see you in the next video peace out youtube